First thing you remember about closed guard is I don't want to be <coughs> vulnerable to his strength and so on. So what I need to do is engage my core. So now when he tries to pull, it's much harder. See that? You can even add to that by bringing your knees in a little bit. So I like to bring my knees in and have my feet out. So it's really, really hard for him. Instead of sitting like this, which we normally do, sit like this. And my knees pinching in behind his butt will even make it harder. And there, see, he lifts everything off the ground. So now when he tries to reach up, it actually, yeah, it's harder for him to reach. And also, if he does reach up, it actually gives me the lapel as well. Okay? Sometimes, when you're in someone's closed guard, they have a lot of maneuverability and they're doing things with their grips and everything. One of the best ways that I ever find when I'm in someone's guard is I grab their lapels and push the lapels under their armpit like that. This is a really good way to uh, limit a strong fighter's movement. See that? So now I get right under there it's really hard for him to do a lot of things. Even if he grabs me, he can't really do a lot with that because I've limited his shoulder movement by driving him flat to the mat. So I get my knees in, I engage my core. As he sits up to do things, thanks. I just go, thank you. And I reach in, I beat him to it by grabbing his lapels and driving them under his armpit. No gi, I simply go thumbs, fingers in, thumbs up like that. That's just as good. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I have this in this position and I'm just going to come to my feet. There like that, or one leg at a time. There like that. See, even though I haven't got control of his hand, it's hard for him to grab because of the armpit control. I come up into this position. All right, and then I'm going to work one of my legs in between on his Coccyx, there like that. Here, push, up, one, two, three. And I'm in this position. And I can just work my way in to there. And then, I just take that leg back. Until my knee is right between his legs. I've got control of the armpits. Stand up that way. Or I even like to put pressure here and stand up this way. And then I put one knee in the middle. And then I just go backwards until his legs come apart. See there like that? I keep control here because by having this control, it's hard for him to say extend my arm. He wants to extend it to get arm bars. Hard for him to get control by getting yes continue there and then what I do is connect my knee and elbow that's the next step so I have the lapels I gradually work them coming back to here either his knees up or down if it's down I go over it if it's up I go under it to go over it I simply use this knee staple it as opposed to pin it you pin something is one point staple it is two points you know when you staple something and the staple's broken, it doesn't hold? But if I have my foot on one side, my knee on the other, I've stapled his leg really strongly to the ground, okay? Whereas if I pin an arm, I only have one point. That's pinning it, it's different, all right? It's, it's still good, but it's a different use, different. Here I want to staple. Knee, foot, you know, I still have this lapel if you want. You can come under here. Still have this staple. I leave it there right to the end. See how I've used my foot? To keep that. Yeah, see that? Keep that. I don't want to flop out, take the foot, because this is what will happen. We'll start to, yeah. Oh, fully. Okay. Up here. Bang. If it's still closed, it's not, of course. Remember, I've gone all the way up. Yeah, you know, I'll do it the whole. Good. Armpit control, take my time. Knees in, there. I'm gonna get up, either one leg at a time or two, it's up to you. Here, boom, work my foot in, there. And then I take the other one back. That position, staple, straight over the top. 
I like to go low on the chest and then push up. Yeah, so that's why. And then you get this with control in there. Then I kind of use this leg to push that leg away and come into side control. Knees come in, core is stabilized. As he sits up, gives me an opportunity to grab his lapels. Even if they're still connected, it doesn't matter. Grab them and put them under his armpit. Once you do that, you limit his ability to do a lot of things. You like that? One, two, knee right in the middle. Sit back. First thing I did, what was the first thing I did when his legs broke? Yeah, connect my elbow and knee so he can't reconnect. Okay? From there, staple. Push. Is this as important? No. Don't worry about it if you don't get that part first. You know, you may just go from here, staple and go straight to normal side control. That's okay too. This is just an added bonus if you have the left top. And then keep this foot engaged. Big step back. Still keep that. Push that away. And then come into side. Oh, like this. I can put my head on his chest to start with. And this is where I'm going. And once again, it's him versus me plus gravity. So I want to push that down really strongly into his armpit. Okay. Now, which way do I cut? You can actually cut both ways. Okay. So I come up. One leg, then the other. Or if you've got good, grab, uh, good grip. One, two, three. You bring one knee in the middle. And the other one just goes back a little bit. Bang. Okay. Now, which way do I go? Right. Because this knee is up, I want to use this knee regardless of which way I go. I don't want to try and use this knee because I've got all my weight on it and it's too difficult. What I want to do in this circumstance, because he's dropped this knee, I would go that side and cut with the opposite knee. Just like a normal knee cut. Notice I still keep control of his lapels. Yeah, and if he lifts up like that, you go, thank you, and you take that and he control there. And he keeps that knee up, he goes this way, that's where you go to the staple with the same side. So, am I making sense? So I can either cut, it's always this knee. Not always, there's no such rule, but you get what I mean. Generally speaking, you want to use this knee to cut across there or to cut across there. Okay? Sometimes I go to knee cut and he blocks. In which case, this hand, I go into my holster like I'm pulling a gun out, and then I go under his leg and put it on my shoulder. And once I get this grip here and I pull my arm back, it's over the top of that arm, I push this hand down here and this, now I'm in a super strong position. It's very hard for him. In my experience, it's very hard for anyone to escape this position. But generally speaking, even top level guys will have a lot of trouble if you have this grip, rip it back, Elbow on his hip, this hand planting the knee down. That hand there is very important because if I let it go, he pulls in, I'm in a triangle or an armbar. So to avoid that, I make sure I, I prioritize this grip here. And if he starts to pull that grip off, I drop my elbow. Now he, he can't pull my elbow because it's connected to my knee. Okay, and I can even come in here and go back to that. Okay, so the priority is don't let that arm get sucked in. Make sure you keep it there and keep it down. Pull that in, change angles, and now I put all my weight on the hip. And where do, what do I do now, Sean? Take the knee to the nose. Perfect, I take his knee to his nose. And after a while, he actually wants me to pass. Right. Okay, so the submission is this. How much flexibility does he have in his groin? So I come in here, get this position, and if I know they're not flexible, I send them a message, there's the flexibility because they lack the groin flexibility. And the message is more stretching, buddy. <laughs> and notice too, when I slip past his head, I don't get to this point and then lift my leg up, boom, because yes, 
And I've taken all the weight off. He's just going to try to push or clear you. So what I need to do is watch my head. At no point should it come back up. All I do is I go around the corner till his leg <coughs> slips off my head. So here we are in the guard. I've done everything. Come up, knee is in, work my way back. Bang. Notice the first thing I did, I retract my elbows. I don't want him to separate my elbows. Yes, like that. I want to stay. If he starts to pull like that, my priority would be to get my knee and elbows together again. That reduces his options. Okay, from there, because this knee's down, maybe I'll cut straight across there with the top knee. Yeah, because I have this underneath. If I try to do that and he blocks it, then I can switch here. I actually switch to this lapel to pass it to this hand. My first priority is to get this knee on my shoulder, not on my arm. That way I'm using the strength of my spine, not my arm. There, see like that? Some people tell you to put fingers in so your elbow doesn't flare. There's nothing wrong with that. It's actually a high level technique as well. I like the thumb in because now I'm really going to consciously pull my elbow in. And see, I use my knee on the outside of the elbow to put pressure on that hip. He still has this grip here. That's okay. I'm just going to let it stay on my thigh for a bit because the longer he grips, the more tired his fingers get. And eventually, if he, if he doesn't let go, eventually he'll let go. But if he doesn't let go, I'm going to work my way down here until I get to the knee. Even if he holds on for dear life, I just get somewhere on the in yes, get somewhere on the inside of the leg there like that. And as long as I drop my elbow behind his femur bone, he's not going anywhere with me. Then I replace my elbow with my knee, turn 90 degrees. It's about now that Jeremy says, I wish I didn't come this morning. And I te test his flexibility there. Yeah, he'll tap, okay? Otherwise, I'm gonna let his leg fall off. It is like a trap.